The King's Avatar, Chapter 1695 A Glimmering Technique Audio Source, WuxiaWorldAudiobook.com Chapter 1695, A Glimmering Technique Translator, No Yummy Editor, No Yummy Was it a problem with Samsara's arrangements? After Pan Lin and Li Yibo analyzed the present situation, most of the viewers thought so. If Zhang Bo Teo were there, the situation would be much better. However, Zhang Bo Teo wasn't there. If that wasn't a problem with their arrangements, then what was it? But the pro players disagreed. Saying that it was an issue with Samsara's arrangements was like giving advice in hindsight. At that time, Samsara's decision to send away Zhang Bo Teo had been correct. On the other hand, their decision to ignore Su Muchung's dancing rain at the start and have everyone go rescue Fang Minghua was questionable. At this moment, because of Zhang Bo Teo's absence, Chao Yifan posed an enormous problem for Samsara. Then again, if Zhang Bo Teo's empty waves had been there, Chao Yifan probably wouldn't have made the same play. Instead of saying that it was a problem with Samsara's arrangements, it would be better to say it was a timely decision from Chao Yifan. Through his astute observations of the overall battle, he was able to create a new situation that looked as if it stemmed from an error on Samsara's part. An outstanding team player, the pro players praised. Every single time this happened, it was a form of torture to Tiny Herb. The profound stares from everyone said everything. No matter how calm they may be, they couldn't help but feel a bit uncomfortable. Samsara had no time to admire Chao Yifan's incredible play. For them, this incredible play meant huge trouble for them. Lord Grimm and Soft Mist, should they chase them or not? It was a difficult decision. Sun Zhang's one autumn leaf circled around the ghost boundary. Chase. Sun Shang saw it. After he and Wu Qi were blocked by Chao Yifan, he saw Yi Xu and Tang Ru slow down, waiting to see what he and Wu Qi did before taking the next step. If Samsara turned on one inch ash those two would probably stop completely and focus on killing Laughing Song as fast as possible. Samsara didn't wish to see this happen. Whether or not they could catch up wasn't important, they would at least be putting pressure on them. That way, Happy had to keep moving laughing, song along, and perhaps those two might make a mistake. Chase, he had to give chase. If the two of them couldn't, then at least one of them should. Sun Shang understood this point, and immediately sent a message to Wu Qi through the team chat. The two split up. Chao Yifan was left to Wu Qi, while Sun Shang had one autumn leaf circle around to continue giving chase. Suddenly, sword light flashed. Moonlight slash into full moonlight slash the classic ghost blade combo appeared in front of one autumn leaf. Sun Shang wasn't looking for trouble, but Xiao Yifan was postured like a sword demon, a phantom demon attacked. How could Xiao Yifan, who excelled at reading the big picture, not recognize the severity of the situation? Little Cold Hand's death was certain. Whether Yi Shu and Tang Ru could finish off Fang Mingwa's laughing song was crucial. For this to happen, blocking Sun Shang and Wu Qi from getting to them was essential. Chao Yi Fan couldn't let them through no matter what. Unfortunately, one inch Ash's CC skills were on cooldown. No matter how much damage Flame Boundary dealt, or how much Defense Plague Boundary lowered, it wouldn't stop the other side from getting through. Out of choices, Chao Yifan could only have one inch ash take the fight to one autumn leaf. Sun Zhang's reaction was quick. One autumn leaf sidestepped twice, evading one inch ash's attacks. One inch ash was extremely close to him. Sun Shang really wanted to beat him up with his evil annihilation. He suddenly had an idea, and quickly typed in the chat, Switch. Having Wu Qi, who was trapped in a ghost boundary, deal with Chao Yifan wasn't as easy as it sounded. Affected by both Ash Boundary and Silence Boundary, Cruel Silence's combat prowess was extremely weak. In an actual 1v1 against 1-inch Ash, he would certainly be on the losing side. He might even be completely dominated. Close-range classes claiming ghost boundaries as bugs wasn't without its reasoning. 
but right now, Chao Yifan was ignoring Wu Qi, instead going for Sun Shang. If one inch ash were pinned down by one autumn leaf, then when cruel silence left the two ghost boundaries, it wouldn't be too big of a delay considering an assassin's speed. So, switch. Sun Shang was ecstatic seeing this opportunity appear. It seemed like the attentive Chao Yifan had made a mistake because of his heavy responsibilities. Tyrant's Destruction The moment he typed out switch. One item leaf unleashed a tyrant's destruction to push one inch ash farther away from his ghost boundaries. Without ghost boundaries, a phantom demon would be at a huge disadvantage in close combat. A phantom demon's essential tools, ghost boundaries, required cast times, but how could there be any time for them to cast anything in close combat? As for their remang attacks those would low-level elementalist and battle mage skills. However, these skills were mainly reserved for survival, not actual combat. But Chao Yifan's reaction was unexpectedly fast as well. When the tyrant's destruction swung his way, one inch ash leapt backwards and then moved to the side. His rhythm was light and brisk. His movement gave people a sense of familiarity, but it seemed rather strange on one inch ash. What's this? The number one phantom demon, Li Zan, blurted out. He was incomparably familiar with phantom demons, but his first thought was that his movements seemed strange. The experienced pro players had the same feeling, but for a moment, they couldn't quite pinpoint why. After this next step, one inch ash stepped to the side again. Overlapping sidesteps, someone shouted. When this name was said, everyone immediately understood where this sense of deja vu came from. Overlapping sidesteps wasn't a rarely seen technique. In fact, it was a very common one. However, because many classes had their own unique playstyles, many classes had their own unique techniques. Overlapping sidesteps was one such technique. It was a very basic movement technique. It was done by using small steps at a fast pace to circle around the opponent's side or back to complete a back attack. Back attacks dealt extra damage, which was a mechanic common to all classes. However, there was one particular class, which had additional bonuses for back attacks. Assassins. The Assassin class advancement skill Assassination Arts buffed the damage from back attacks even further. Assassins were inherently fast and nimble, so players tried to go for back attacks whenever possible. WuxiaWorldAudio.com Any class could perform overlapping sidesteps. It was just that assassins made the best use of the technique. As a result, assassins were usually the best at this movement technique. One Inch Ash obviously wasn't an assassin. A few close-ranged classes would sometimes use it, but Ghost Blades, particularly Phantom Demons, seem to have no relation with this technique. But at this moment, One Inch Ash was using it, making the people watching feel like it was an unfamiliar sight. However, the distinct characteristics of the technique could clearly be seen. It didn't look like he was doing it on a whim. Only a practiced and skilled assassin had this level of mastery. Why would a ghost blade, a phantom demon, have practiced an assassin's technique to this extent? To the point that he could even execute it so smoothly at such a critical moment. Many people felt puzzled, but those with an understanding of Chao Yifan's background, especially the tiny herb players, didn't find it particularly strange. When Chao Yifan had been a part of Tiny Herb, the team had him play an assassin. It was a class that he had bitterly practiced within the pro scene for half a year. He had switched classes to a phantom demon, but he hadn't abandoned the techniques that he had practiced as an assassin. He had worked hard to learn those assassin techniques. Even though his new class wasn't suited for them, he felt like keeping them under his belt could never be a bad thing. After all, he had a teammate who was proficient with all classes, and Chao Yifan had seen him use techniques from numerous classes, transforming the rotten into the miraculous. He didn't have the talent to be proficient in all classes, but everything he had already practiced was a weapon. There would be a day, moment, where it would be useful. Even a single time would be enough for it all to be worth it.
And this moment had come. Overlapping sidesteps. A very ordinary technique that many assassins were extremely familiar with. This technique was used to get to the side or behind an opponent as fast as possible, but this didn't mean that the opponent would be unable to move. Against an opponent of Sun Zhang's caliber, a two-step overlapping side steps was something that he could keep up with. What's more, these overlapping side steps were being done by a phantom demon, not an assassin. No one could have expected a phantom demon to use overlapping side steps, let alone have such mastery over it. It was as if he were an actual assassin. When Sung Xian realized this and reacted, one inch ash completed his third step. Three steps, three small steps, and one inch ash circled around from one autumn leaf's front to his side. Only then did Sun Shang react. Only then did one autumn leaf move. But one inch ash had already made his move. Lunge, a low level blade master skill, an extremely fast stab. It was too fast. It was impossible to dodge. One item leaf was hit. The damage from the skill wasn't high, but the skill had a knockback effect. Dot. Sun Zhang's expression changed. He realized what this knockback meant. To one autumn leaf side was the Ash and Silence boundary. End chapter. The King's Avatar. Chapter 1696. First Death. Audio Source. WushaWorldAudioBook.com. Chapter 1696. First Death. Translator, Nomiyami Editor, Nomiyami. Weight increased, skills sealed. Chase after Lord Grimm and Soft Mist under the effects of both Ash Boundary and Silence Boundary. Kill Kiao Yifen's one inch ash. Don't even bother thinking about these possibilities. Sun Xiang's one autumn leaf had been pushed into the overlapping ghost boundaries. Ghost boundary effects usually only lasted a few seconds, but on the pro stage, a few seconds was more than enough to alter the course of the match. Lord Grimm and Soft Mist immediately stopped their high-speed movement, instead switching into kill mode. The two characters poured out their attacks and skills. Laughing Song's health plummeted as if someone had turned on the tap. Sun Xiang and Wu Qi could only watch quietly. They were the closest to Laughing Song, but these ghost boundaries made him feel as if they were the farthest away. Jiang Botao's empty waves had already started suppressing Dancing Rain. It wasn't possible for him to switch targets and worry about others. No matter the development, suppressing Su Chung would always be an important win condition. Samsara had indeed been too hasty before. Suppressing Su Mu Chung should have been a task carried out at all times. There was also Zhou Zekai. Whenever the team was in a stalemate, at a disadvantage, or in an uncertain situation, Zhou Zekai would always stand out, using his powerful presence to lead Simsara out, turning the tides and putting him on the road to victory. It was almost to be expected. As a result, countless eyes looked towards Joe Zekai's Cloud Piercer. The Samsara fans hoped for another miracle from Joe Zekai. Happy's players would never relax their guard against this top player. Among them, there was one pair of eyes that was practically glued to Cloud Piercer. His gaze never went anywhere else. And when Yi, he didn't know that Kiao Yivan had sealed off Samsara's two pursuers with his ghost boundaries. He didn't know that Yi Xu and Tang Rou had stopped to hurry and kill Laughing Song. He didn't know that Su Mu Chung was fighting against Jiang Botao, trying to find an opportunity to help her teammates. He didn't even know how much health Little Cold Hands had left, nor did he look at Cloud Pierce's health. The only thing he paid attention to was Cloud Pierce's movements and his two guns. Left. Right retreat, jump, and when Yi stared at the movements of the guns, his little cold hands reacted accordingly. In the pro scene, he was seen as a clear weakness of Happy's, but at this moment, he was keeping watch over the best of the best in glory. Based on what? And when Yi didn't know, or perhaps it was just his conviction, 
his conviction to stop Joe Zekai from escaping, his conviction to win, to be the champion, the Glory Alliance's champion, one year ago, two years ago, and when he could only dream of those words. He had just been another player among the hundreds of millions who played Glory. He had been a cleric, who admired Glory's number one player, Tyranny's Zhang Xinji, and supported Tyranny as a result. That was why he had joined Tyranny's in-game guild, becoming one of the regular healers among tyrannical ambitions teams. For the vast majority of players, being a regular in a club guild was considered being among the top players in Glory. But in tyrannical ambition, he wasn't even good enough to be one of the elites. The guild's elite team would usually be personally led by the guild leader. For him, the elite team had already been unreachable. But in less than two years, he stood on the pro stage fighting against players who had formerly been on a different plane of existence. He shook hands and greeted his idol, Zhang Xinji. And now he was in the finals, fighting for the championship title. So what if he was happy weak point? If he could win the championship, nothing else mattered. Fight and hold him down. And when Yi's little cold hands was a like a piece of sesame soft candy. He was tangled around Cloud Piercer, blocking off his guns and his vision. Keep going. Keep going. He had forgotten everything. The only thing reaming in his heart was his conviction. Even when Little Cold Hands was down to his last drop of life, he didn't hesitate. He wasn't looking at anything else. His final struggle was the same as any other moment. Determined and resolute, he had to block Cloud Piercer no matter what. Bang. This was the last gunshot that and when he heard. Then, the sky and earth went spinning. He saw Cloud Piercer sweep past him in a flash. I can't let him through. And when he thought to himself, he had little cold hands reach out with his hands to grab onto the corner of Cloud Piercer's windbreaker. Got him. When little cold hands' fingers touched Cloud Piercer's windbreaker, and when his heart burst with joy, had he successfully stopped Josekai again? But in the next second, the windbreaker vanished from his view. Only his hand was left, still stretched forward. The world turned grey. It's over. Little cold hands fell, becoming the first death this match. For in Wen Yi, the finals was over. His season was over. He no longer had control over the outcome, but everything he had done still remained. However, he still had one lingering regret in his heart, that windbreaker, why wasn't I able to grab onto it? Happy's healer was dead. Usually, this news would make the opposing team overjoyed. Even if Happy's healer was Happy's weakness, a healer was a healer, an irreplaceable asset in the team competition. Whoever controlled the enemy healer, controlled the match. Then, what if you killed the enemy healer? That was practically an early proclamation of victory. However, apart from some sparse applause from Simsara's fans, no one was excited at this scene. No one felt like the world was theirs when Happy's Healer died because everyone knew that just killing Happy's Healer didn't count for anything. Whether Samsara could rescue their own healer was the important question. Cloud Piercer rushed over like an arrow. Laughing Song had been brought outside of his attack range by Lord Grimm and Soft Miss because and when Yi's crazed struggle against him had made it so that he was unable to get closer. I wonder if a new method to deal with Josekai has been found. Li Yibo joked around, but he didn't get any responses from Pan Lin. He was completely absorbed into the match. And when Yi's stupid yet smart play, the tenacity and spirit that he showed wasn't something Pan Lin could laugh about. A new method. It was just a joke. Everyone felt that what they had just witnessed was inconceivable, and something inconceivable often couldn't be replicated. Even and when Yi himself wouldn't be able to repeat his performance today. Before today, he had probably never thought that he could do something like this.
Even after this match when he looked back, he himself would find it unbelievable. A new method. Only something with reason and context could be called a method. This sort of unconventional miracle couldn't be considered a method. Now, the miracle had faded away. Simsara's Josekai had finally regained his freedom. This was also someone brought miracles to Samsara again and again. What would he do for Samsara next? One step, two steps, three steps. WashourWorldAudio.com Cloud Piercer quickly gave chase. There was no one to stop him. Even though Su Mu Chung's dancing rain fired a few artillery shells at him, she wasn't able to sustain it. Jiang Botao marking her was already paying off. She couldn't do as she pleased anymore. She need to first deal with empty waves attacks before she could do anything. They're in firing range. Lord Grimm and Soft Mist were finally in Cloud Pierce's range. During this time, Yi Xu and Tang Ro hadn't chosen to escape. They had lost control over Zhou Zekai. They could only hurry and try to finish off Laughing Song. Bullets flew out, and in the blink of an eye, a rain of bullets swept towards them. The two continued to attack as they brought Laughing Song over behind a crumbling wall for some cover. But the cover only lasted a short while. The wall was short and small. In just a few steps, Cloud Piercer had vision of them again. One autumn leaf and cruel silence had finally left the ash boundary and silence boundary. Even though Kiao Yivan had enshrouded them with more ghost boundaries, these new ones didn't have powerful CC effects. As a result, the two didn't hesitate to force their way through them. It looks like this is all I can do. Seeing Laughing Song's remowing health, Kiao Yivan triggered his final move. Ghost Feast. The chained ghost boundaries erupted, and because the ghost boundaries weren't completely overlapping, the ghost god's power enveloped an enormous area. At the same time, even though the ghost feast covered a huge area, its damage and effects weren't as high. Sun Xiang and Wu Qi weren't scared by it. The two used skills to overcome the effects of ghost feast, and rushed out towards Laughing Song. Laughing Song didn't have much health left but there was still time. Cloud Pierce's long-ranged attacks weren't able to completely interrupt Lord Grimm's and Soft Mist's attacks, but they were able to influence their offense somewhat, lowering their DPS. Happy wouldn't be able to kill Laughing Song before they arrived. It's Simsara's win, as long as Simsara rescued Laughing Song. At this moment, too too many people had this thought. Happy's wandering assault had completely suppressed Laughing Song, but the DPS was too low. Even though Joe Zekai was the only one attacking Little Cold Hands, without anyone interfering, he could completely focus on offense. Too slow. Happy had run fast, but their damage output was too low. Sigh. Those with hope for Happy had already begun sighing. But just when Cloud Piercer moved into a new angle to attack, Joe Zekai stared blankly. He had realized something. They had overlooked something once again. Dot. Happy's healer was the first to die. Thus, Happy's sixth player would be the first to switch in at the support zone below the pyramid, Steamed Bun Invasion, End Chapter. The King's Avatar, Chapter 1697 Simple Detail, Audio Source, WushaWorldAudiobook.com Chapter 1697 Simple Detail Translator, Nomiyami Editor, Nomiyami It was a bit too late for Lord Grimm and Soft Mist to kill Laughing Song, but now, with Steamed Bun Invasion, Ordinary viewers might have noticed how severe the problem was but the pro players already couldn't help but begin to applaud. Because they knew that this was definitely within Happy's calculations. They couldn't fault Samsara for overlooking this because they had only noticed anything when Steamed Bun Invasion had entered from the support zone and joined in on attacking Laughing Song. 
It was only because they were in the audience and had the omniscient view that they saw steamed bun invasion sooner and recognized the problem faster. And on Samsara's side, even now, Joe Zekai was the only one who had seen steamed bun invasion, and only he had recognized this problem. Sun Xiang and Wu Qi's views were blocked just perfectly. So they hadn't yet seen the sixth player steamed bun invasion. And they hadn't realized that Happy had been running this whole time not just to avoid their pursuers and escape Cloud Pierce's firing range, but also to place the final attack location right next to the support zone. As soon as they began executing this exchange, Happy had realized that Little Cold Hands would definitely die before Laughing Song, so they had made preparations long before. Happy had seen a little further. By the time Samsara realized the problem, it was already too late. Ash. In Samsara's chat, a message from Josekai suddenly appeared. Josekai was extremely decisive. As soon as he realized the problem, he swiftly let go. It was too late to save Laughing Song. This was the conclusion he made, and so Cloud Piercer turned fire, suddenly attacking One Inch Ash. Sun Xiang and Wu Qi were stunned. The two of them had still been desperately making their way there as fast as they could. Joe Zekai's message, Joe Zekai's intent, they instantly understood, but why? Even now, the two of them still hadn't realized that this was close to the support area. They hadn't realized the problem that because Happy's healer died first, their sixth player would appear and increase their DPS. But right now, there was no time for them to hesitate, or ask an extra question. Turn fire. Instantly, these two firmly carried out their captain's directions. On the battlefield, the players were mostly left to rely on their own judgment and initiative, but when there was a clear instruction or intent, cooperation came first. As for whether or not the players could instantly grasp the intent of an instruction, that depended on the tacit understanding between team members. Sun Xiang and Wu Qi hadn't seen steamed bun invasion, so they didn't understand the full situation. But the two cooperated with Joe Zekai with unquestioning resolve. One autumn leaf, cruel silence, the two characters suddenly spun around, swiftly charging toward one inch ash. Kiao Yivan was startled. He had still been calculating which of one inch ash's ghost boundaries were off cooldown so he could go sneak attack a few more of Simsara's players. When all of a sudden, three of his opponents were suddenly charging toward him without warning. Kiao Yifen's situational awareness was excellent, he was cautious and attentive, but ultimately he still lacked battle experience. Simsara's swift and decisive response caught him off guard. Cloud Pierce's gunfire came toward One Inch Ash first, and One Autumn Leaf and Cruel Silence were converging upon him. Even though these two still didn't understand the reason for turning their fire, their execution was clean and precise. When they switched their target, the first thing they did was cut off the path that one inch Ash could have used to get support from Lord Grimm, Soft Mist, and the others. They wanted to force one inch Ash into a corner. Kiao Yivan could see this, and he didn't want to tangle with them. One inch Ash turned tail and ran. With Joe Zekai's Cloud Piercer marking him, his one inch ash had no chance to cast any ghost boundaries. Moreover, when he'd been slowing down one autumn leaf and cruel silence earlier, one inch ash had been setting ghost boundaries one after another without any rhythm. Right now, many of them were still on cooldown. They're on me. While Kiao Yivan had one inch ash to flee, he was also swiftly alerting everyone in happy, Simsara was coming for him. And the escaping Kiao Yivan wasn't simply running away in any random path. There was no way he could race against three people. Besides, movement speed wasn't a ghost blade's strength. One inch ash leapt forward, tumbling over a fallen stone pillar, and after that he didn't stand up again. 
Hiding behind it, he frantically crept along. Borrowing this cover, he could avoid at least some of the damage from Cloud Pierce's fire for now. Kiao Yivan knew that he couldn't escape completely. All he needed to do was stall, to hold on for as long as he could, until his own side could come help him. The cover of the stone pillar also blocked his field of view, so Kiao Yivan couldn't see the situation of his pursuers. However, some distance away, he could see the struggle between Su Mu Chung and Jiang Botao. If he crept closer, he could achieve a bit of support from Su Mu Chung's firepower. Kiao Yivan saw very clearly that, right now, Su Mu Chung might be the only one who could extend a hand of support. But at this moment, Kiao Yivan heard a gunshot. Different types of guns fired shots with different sound effects. Guns of the same type would sound more similar, but the differences between a rifle, a revolver, and a hand cannon were simply too different. The sound of this shot clearly had a lot of strength behind it, and there was no series of rapid sounds after it. This was very clearly characteristic of a rifle shot's sound. A rifle. Right now, the only one on the battlefield with that type of gun was the gun form of Lord Grimm's myriad manifestations umbrella. Ye Zhi was currently closing in on Laughing Song, Lord Grimm didn't have a reason to use firing attacks. So, was this shot meant to support him? Kiao Yivan was indeed very attentive to detail. After hearing just this one shot, his mind considered many things. And on Su Mu Chung's end, he noticed that her dancing rain was currently moving toward his own position. But it wasn't clear that it was to support him. It seemed more like she was simply making a strategic supporting movement. Kiao Yivan didn't act rashly. He continued along his chosen path. Only when one inch Ash was furiously running did he hurriedly swivel his view to look back. And so, he saw Lord Grimm. He thought that the others couldn't come support to him so quickly, but when he saw Lord Grimm's position, he realized that Lord Grimm wasn't just firing that one shot when he found the spare time. Lord Grimm was actually charging straight out, chasing after the tails of those three samsara players. This is. Kiao Yivan was stunned, but he quickly realized. Stupid. How was he so stupid? The reason why it would have been inconvenient for Yi Xu and the others to come rescue him was because they had to focus fire to kill Laughing Song as fast as possible before Simsara could save him. But now, Simsara's three had clearly changed their target. They were no longer trying to rescue their healer. With that, of course, killing off Laughing Song was no longer a pressing matter. Controlling and killing a cleric, one person was enough for that. So, Ye Zhu's Lord Grimm quickly broke away to leap at Simsara's tails, without any delay. As expected of a god. Even though Kiao Yivan had been playing with Ye Xu for over two years now, his feelings of worship had never faded. Just now, for example, the logic was as simple as adding 1 plus 1, but under the intense conditions of battle, to be able to recognize and react so quickly, that definitely wasn't as simple as 1 plus 1. At least, Kiao Yivan hadn't thought of it, and Simsara had overlooked it too, no. WashaWorldAudio.com in the audience, the pro players were still praising Joe Zekai's decision to turn fire as unusually decisive. They were just like Kiao Yivan. In that moment, their minds hadn't made the connection. But then, they saw Yi Xu's Lord Grimm rushing forth ferociously. After everyone was stunned for a moment, they too all realized what was going on, and they were filled with mixed emotions. It was such a simple logic, how come they had all overlooked it? The pro players all exchanged glances, and no one spoke. But at that moment, just as it seemed that Cloud Piercer was closing in on one inch ash with single-minded focus, 
Just as it seemed that he was going to seize him in his grasp, Cloud Piercer suddenly made a 180-degree turn. He lifted his jewel revolvers, and they spat fire. Turned fire. Cloud Piercer actually turned fire once again, moving quickly at the same time. He actually threw one inch ash aside again, and charged back toward Laughing Song. This is. The audience was once again dumbfounded. Had Simsara really overlooked such a simple logic? Perhaps some people would, but Josekai hadn't. He had been using this simple principle to lure Happy into lessening their offense against Laughing Song. And then, using the range advantage of his cloud piercer, he turned fire yet again and broke the offense that Happy had mounted against Laughing Song. A small advance and retreat, a link that everyone had overlooked, yet Yi Xu and Zhou Zekai had set up so many schemes here. Perhaps these two really are on another level said honored guest Lee Yibo in the broadcast. This was an extremely simple detail, but the real story lay within this simple detail. Joe Zekai controlled Cloud Piercer to charge in that direction. His long-range control was limited, but Fang Minghua wasn't dead. If Joe Zekai's offense could allow him to seize the slightest opening, he would work as hard as he could to persist. But even so, Joe Zekai wasn't completely confident. Ideally, Happy would have only left one person to continue attacking Laughing Song. Judging from Happy's bold and wild style today, he felt that that possibility was quite likely. But although Happy was quite unrestrained when they were going wild, when Joe Zekai hoped for them to go wild, to his surprise, Happy had in fact restrained themselves. Perhaps they had seen through his intention. Joe Zekai thought. After all, the other side had realized that they could loosen up and send an attacker away. With Yi Zhu's knowledge and shrewdness, it was very likely that they had also prepared to defend against this strategy of baiting the tiger away from the mountain. But if they had recognized this possibility of bait, and still sent out an attacker anyway, then it had to be said that Happy really was quite daring. But to go wild like this all the time, there had to be some price to pay, no. Cloud Pierce to charge forth, his gunfire quick and biting. Joe Zekai had thought very deeply, but he didn't waver on his decision. He didn't have a good handle on this situation, but he still firmly believed that this was worth an attempt. He believed in himself, and he believed in Fang Minghua. Our healer is still here. End chapter.